Tate Modern is one of the world's most famous art galleries. The building itself used to be a power station. It's celebrating its 21st anniversary this month. It was um, opened in 2005 by Queen Elizabeth II, and it was a big event which I remember watching on TV. And in the first year alone, over five million people visited. It completely transformed that area. You know, it's a really amazing spot. It's got the River Thames running in front of it, the Millennium Bridge leading over to St Paul's Cathedral. It's a huge tourist draw, so yeah. Well, I moved to London in 2004, doing a bit of a Dick Whittington, you know, seeking fame and fortune in the, in the big smoke. But really, my money was running out and I desperately needed a job. So I was checking on all the museum and gallery websites and I looked on the Tate website, found the job and applied for it. And I was called through for an interview. I went along to Tate Modern and they told me to go up to a person and tell them that photographs weren't allowed. And I think the interview was just to check that I could interact with people without causing a scene. I got a reference from a really special uh, teacher. Got me the job. I was a gallery attendant. One of the people you see in galleries when you visit, they're either sitting down like a tennis umpire watching the visitors or walking around the gallery. I would answer visitor questions. You know, I had to say, oh, no photos, please. And, oh, please don't touch the artworks. Basically, that kind of thing. In the main, I did really enjoy it. It was amazing to be surrounded by so much art for one, and the gallery became like a second home. So it was like, oh, this is my living room with a Picasso. This is the dining room with the Boyce. So that was an amazing factor. Well, one of the big perks was that if I flashed my Tate Pass, you know, my staff pass, then I would get entry into pretty much every museum and gallery in London, which was amazing. The National Gallery, Whitechapel, the Barbican. I also got staff discount on books in the shop. And the training was really good too, especially a sign language training. The, the lady running the sign language course had, had no sense of hearing, so she communicated through sign language and there's lip reading. And in that session she taught us how to sign from A to Z so we could spell out words. Yeah, looking back on it now I find it really moving. Yeah, the sign language course was, was great. We are also able to have free catalogues for exhibitions and I think the first catalogue was for the Robert Frank exhibition which I sent to my referee to, to say thank you. I thought that would be the best thing to do. One, where are the toilets? Two, how do I get to the second floor? At Tate Modern, the escalator runs from the ground floor to the third floor, missing the second floor, so that was really confusing for visitors. To get to the second floor, you have to go from the outside. It's confusing. Three, what does this artwork mean? And in that case, I usually said, what do you think it means? And in most cases, their answer was far more imaginative and interesting than the answer I would have given. First, the large glass by Marcel Duchamp. So in Tate they've got an officially sanctioned replica of this work and it's made by Richard Hamilton. And I studied this at school so I was really interested to see it pretty much every day. And there are so many elements to the work that Duchamp put into it that it just keeps on giving. Another plus point as a gallery attendant is that the work is transparent so I could see through it and if there were anyone taking pictures or touching the artworks it was easy for me to collar them. The Turbine Hall exhibitions, the Oliver Eliasson weather project with the big sun, whatever you think about it, it was a real spectacle and people loved visiting the work and having picnics and forming shapes with their bodies and that sort of thing. Three, the Martin Kippenberger exhibition, I have a real soft spot for. One of the things he set out to do was to do a real good fried egg in art and I think Martin Kippenberger really nailed that. 
He was the master of fried eggs, in my opinion. Okay, I want to first say this is no disrespect to the artists involved. All will become clear. Um, number one, Anish Kapoor's work, um, and that's mainly because it seemed to have a magnetic pull on people. People were always falling into his work, tripping over his work, running their fingers down it, even when he told them not to. They were just drawn to it, like sailors to, to mermaids, sirens. Two, Carsten Holler's slides. They look like fun, right? And people enjoyed them. But Tate underestimated how popular they'd be. Even like with a ticketing system, there were big long queues and people disappointed because they travelled far to go on them and it just it turned the gallery into a theme park, really. And three, artist's artist Bruce Nauman. His work continues to inspire generations of artists, but if you're a gallery attendant and you have to sit next to a video of a clown jumping up and down saying no, 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 over and over again, then I think that you'd go right off his work too. An honourable mention goes to Shiboleth by Doris Salcedo, which was an artwork in the Turbine Hall where a crack was put in the floor. And like Anish Kapoor, a good many people tripped over that and fell into it. I think, and don't quote me on this, there were a few twisted ankles, a few sprains. Didn't make it to the top three, but definitely an honourable mention. Yeah, they did. They, for example, had Late at Tate when the gallery was open after standard hours for special events. Now, when I was growing up, and like I was at secondary school, I was a big fan of Sonic Youth. There was one event there that involved Kim Gordon and a different event that involved Thurston Moore, both of Sonic Youth. So I was just like so excited. It was like being a teenager again to see them. There were lots of workshops for school children, children in general, kind of practical workshops of making things. Yeah, the Turbine Hall was a really great space for going to see performances and movies and other events. And often people would sit on the floor, they'd bring their own blankets and cushions were provided by Tate. And they could lie down or sit down on the sloping floor of the Turbine Hall and really soak up the atmosphere of what was going on. They had screenings of classic films and uh, there was one time where a, a Japanese noise band performed and kind of filled that vast turbine hall with the sound of noise music which kind of echoed how it must have sounded when it was a turbine hall providing power and energy for nearby buildings and the, and the train lines running nearby. And you could drink wine and beer there which again you don't see in many other galleries overseas, including in Japan. So yeah, there were lots of special events and performances in addition to the exhibitions. Well, yeah, it's funny you should ask that. Um, I did see quite a few famous people while I was there. Let me see. I saw Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, American rock band, rushing down an escalator. Natalie Portman on the back of her Star Wars fame, and she was with a big bodyguard. Oh, there was a really nice moment with the actor Andy McDowell, also in shampoo commercials and she walked past me and looked straight at me and my heart was racing, you know, because I'd only seen her, just seen her in four weddings and a funeral. And she gave me this beautiful warm smile as if to say, yes, I am Andy McDowell and I can see you're not going to ask for an autograph or cause a fuss, so let's share this moment. And that has stuck with me ever since. And probably the most famous person I saw was James Bond himself, Sean Connery. But on the day I saw him he wasn't happy because he was refused admission to a busy exhibition for not having a ticket. He was told, you can come back later, and he said, oh not today, not today. Um, I can't do a Sean Connery impression. But yeah, it was amazing. Um, have I missed anyone? 
Oh, and John Waters, the Pope of Trash film director. And it was a real coincidence because at that time I was watching lots of his movies like Hairspray and Pink Flamingos. And to see him there in the flesh, just feet away from me, was like a dream. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that was most amazing about the job, was the people I worked with. The first thing that struck me was that there were workmates from all over the world, especially Europe. I found my workmates in the main to be really kind, friendly and supportive. And I really think that if everyone in the UK had had that sort of experience, then we'd still be in the EU now, because I just felt a part of Europe through, through working with these people. Another thing that's really important is that a lot of staff in Tate Modern are creatives themselves. Artists, designers, art students, you know, there were painters, printmakers, people from all different creative fields. And so they were passionate about the work that was on display, knowledgeable, so they could answer questions. And there was a really thriving creative scene amongst staff. You know, staff collaborating with each other on exhibitions, going to each other's private views, or putting the world to rights in the pubs near the gallery. So that was, that was really exciting, and it's not something I see in Japan. And I think that in Tate Modern, that passion for creativity came across in the um, gallery attendants, the shop staff, the office staff. The visitors must have picked up on that. Of course, one guy who springs to mind was taking a photo of one of the paintings and at that time photography wasn't permitted. So I went over to him and gently said, oh, I'm sorry, but photography isn't allowed. And he proceeded to take a photo of every single work in that room before getting right in my face and taking a picture of me. Charming. Yeah, yeah, there was one family parents and they had a little daughter and the, the parents were saying go on go on go on ask go on ask so the little girl came up to me and said oh excuse me can you tell me where the little dancer is please and i knew that she was referring to the little dancer of 14 years by dagar but i had to tell her oh, i'm sorry but that work isn't on display at the moment and she said okay Thank you very much. And I thought nothing of it, so I walked off. And then a little later I was walking past the same room where I saw that family. And the little girl was just crying and crying. She was sobbing her heart out. And I thought how brave she was to hold it together when she got that bad news and to be so polite in front of me. And that stuck with me all, all those years. Okay, the video is now closing. Please make your way to the like and subscribe buttons and other videos. Thank you very much for visiting us today. We look forward to seeing you again.